Okay, today we are going to be identifying and working with polygons. Identifying and working with polygons and a polygon. is a closed figure with a finite number of straight sides A polygon is a closed figure with a finite number of straight sides. So some examples of polygons right here. There's a polygon, right? What is it called? Triangle, good, because it's got three sides. All right. Polygon. Closed figure finite number of straight sides all right so these over here these are not polygons you know a shape like this it's not closed if a shape were to have a curvy side that's not a polygon. Not a polygon. Not when, uh, not when they're connected like that. If you're classifying it as a polygon or not a polygon, that's not a polygon. All right, not a polygon. All right, and then polygons can be classified into two types, concave and convex. All right, concave and convex. So let's go, uh, we're gonna say polygons. And then we're going to do concave and convex. All right, so look, a concave polygon would look something like this. That's got one, two, three, four, five sides. This would be a five-sided convex polygon. Well, let's pretend that's straight. See the difference? That's the way I always remembered it, is if it looks like the shape is caved in a little bit, you know. The definition is a little more technical. Um,
But the easiest way to remember the difference between convex and concave is, you know, if it looks like if one of the vertices is inside of its two neighboring vertices. Okay. So on this convex polygon, you got a vertex right here. Well, it's outside of its two neighboring vertices. Okay. And this vertex is outside of its two neighboring vertices. Right. And if a vertex is inside of its two neighboring vertices, then it is considered concave. All right, so we're still talking about polygons. So we've got concave polygons, we've got convex polygons, equilateral polygons. We're going to look at this term, equilateral. Equilateral polygons, all sides have the same length. And then still while we're talking about polygons, we've got equal angular. Equa angular. That's when all the angles have the same measure. And then what you've got is what is called a regular polygon. A regular polygon. Has all congruent sides and angles. So a regular, here's an example of a regular triangle. In a regular triangle, all these sides are the same. They're all the same length. All of these angles have the same angle measure. All the sides are the same, all the angles are the same. So a regular polygon is equilateral and equiangular, isn't it? So just that simple one little term right there, regular. When you're told that a polygon is regular, it means a lot of things. It means that all the sides are the same, then it means all the angles are the same. Now, polygons have different names. And when you're naming polygons, we're going to do a little chart here. We're going to say that in this column, we're going to do number of sides. And in this column, we're going to have the name of the polygon.
So if it's got three sides, you know that it's called a triangle. And if it's got four sides, that's a quad trilateral. Five sides, anybody? Good, pentagon. And what about six sides? Hexa, gone. Seven sides. That's a uh, hepta. Don't see that one very often. But you see this one often, don't you? The eight sided. What's that? Octagon. We're going to do nine and ten, and then the rest we're going to call something different. So nine is a Ninagon with an O, so a nonagon. And then ten sided is a decagon. All right, so in some of your practice today, you're going to be asked to, you know, classify the triangle as concave or convex, regular or irregular, and then name the polygon based on its number of sides. Okay? Classify and name each polygon. Classify and name each polygon. So let's go back to this thing. All right, so concave or convex? Yes. Regular or irregular? Yeah, irregular. And now we're going to name it. Quadrilateral, very good. So we got a concave irregular quadrilateral. And then let's do it one more time here with, uh, we'll try, I'll tr well, I'll try. And if I do this, And this. Now 
Now what do we have, ladies and gentlemen? Concave or convex? Good. It's convex. Regular or irregular? Very good. Why is it regular? All the sides are the same and all the angles are the same, right? And then what's its name? Pentagon. Very good. Any baseball or softball players in here? Yep. Home plate's a pentagon, right? Five sides. Five sides. And that big white building, what is it, in Washington? I think they call it the Pentagon. It's got five sides as well. So five sided, that's a Pentagon. Got it? Okay, next we're going to talk about perimeter of a polygon. The perimeter of a polygon is the sum of the lengths of the sides. All right, perimeter, you add up all of the sides. And let's go over four real common shapes here. Um, perimeter of a polygon is the sum of the lengths of the sides circumference of a circle is the distance around the outside. So we're going to do another little table right here, and we're going to do the shape. And then we're going to do the perimeter. And then the formula for the area. All right, so we're going to start off with this triangle. We're going to label these sides B, C, and D. And we're going to put a dimension right down here. Call it H. All right, so the perimeter of this triangle would be equal to B plus C plus D. The sum of the sides. The area would be equal to one half times the base times the height. One half times the base times the height. 
this is this little note right here is super important. Base and height. are always perpendicular. When you're talking about shapes, this is extremely important for the entire year. The base and the height of a shape are always perpendicular to each other. The base and the height are always perpendicular. Here's your height, this dashed line going down, going vertically through this triangle. This 90 degree symbol says that the height and the base intersect at 90 degrees. That means the height and the base are perpendicular. If you're ever confused about base and height, and you're going to use two dimensions, make sure that the dimensions you use are representing two segments that are perpendicular to each other. Clear? Very good. All right, so then we got a square. And that's not a very good square, but that's all I got for today. It's got all 90 degree angles. It's got all congruent sides. It makes it a regular quadrilateral, doesn't it? And each side is represented by the letter S. So the perimeter of a square is equal to, the perimeter is equal to four times one of the side lengths. And the area of a square is equal to one of the sides squared. Then we got a rectangle. And a rectangle's got a length and it's got a width. And in a rectangle, these lengths are congruent and the widths are congruent. So the perimeter of this rectangle is equal to two of the lengths plus two of the widths. Perimeter of a rectangle, two lengths plus two widths. The area of a rectangle, that's just equal to the length times the width. Length times width.
All right, and then lastly here, we got a we got a circle. I ain't drawn a circle in a while. Oh, that's not bad. We got a circle. Circle's got this dimension right here. From the center to the side, that's our radius. Then the circle's got the dimension that goes from side to side through the center. That's the diameter. And now when we're talking about a circle, we don't, we don't use the word perimeter. We use the word circumference. And the circumference of a circle has two formulas. You can either multiply pi times the diameter or you can use circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius. And you can use both of those or either of those formulas because what is the radius equal to? Isn't it the, yeah, it's half the diameter. And doesn't the diameter equal two of the radiuses? All right, and then we got a formula for the area of a circle. And the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Pi times radius squared. And you got to square the radius before you multiply it by pi. Must square the radius before you multiply it by pi. must square radius first. You got to square the radius, then you push times and you push the pi button in your calculator. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm looking through your workbook. The problems are fairly straightforward. But some of these coordinate problem problems, let's do an example of a coordinate geometry problem.
let's say we got to find the perimeter and area. of triangle, PQR. With vertices, P is at negative one, three. Q is at negative three, negative one. And R is at four, negative one. We got to find the perimeter. We got to find the area. What do you think we should do first? Anybody got any ideas how we're going to start this problem? Yes, sir. We're going to draw it out first. All right. Anytime they don't give you a picture, anytime you're doing a problem in here and you don't have a picture of it, make a picture of it. Makes everything way easier. Okay. So if we need a point at, we need negative one, three, and we need negative three, negative one, and we need four, one. So we're pretty much all spread out. So we're just gonna, let's see, our Y's go from three to negative one. Our X's go from four to negative three. So we can go about like this here. Here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis. We got a p at negative one, three. So negative one and three, here's point p. We got q at negative three, negative one. So negative three and a negative one. That's q. Say again. And r is at four and one. Nope, four, negative one, so it's about here. Those are both the negative ones. They need to be they need to be in the same spot. Negative three, negative one. All right. Now this is where if you have graph paper, it it really helps. So if we sketch this shape. There's our shape, right? One side, two sides, three sides. First thing we need is the perimeter. The perimeter is gonna be equal to, all right, how far is it from negative three on the x-axis to positive four on the x-axis? Yeah, seven. So this side, QR, is seven units, isn't it? Does everybody see that? They're both at negative one on the y-axis and they're seven units apart. So that side is seven units long. Now you need this side, you need this red side. And then you need this blue side. Now we've already done the distance formula this year, right? So you would take the coordinates of point P and take the coordinates of point Q and you would do the distance formula. You're at negative three, negative one, and up here you're at negative one, positive three, and you would do the distance formula. Or you could turn this into a right triangle, all right, and this side of the right triangle goes from negative one to negative three on the x-axis, so it's two units long. And this vertical side of that same triangle goes from three on the y-axis to negative one. So it is four units long. So the red side of this triangle, okay, would be equal to four squared plus two squared equals this side. So what's four squared? Good. You can take your calculator and you can type 4x squared plus 2x squared and push equals. 
and there's a 20 on your screen and then you can push the square root button and you're going to get, we're going to use 4.5. Okay, so this is 4.5 units. We can do the same thing for the blue side. We need this side right here and this side right here. So this horizontal side goes from P at negative 1 to R at 4, so that's 5 units. And then we're going from 3 to negative 1, this is 4 again. So we've got a, this side right here is going to be equal to 5 squared plus 4 squared equals that side. So that's another calculator problem. 5x squared plus 4x squared equals square root 6.4. So here's your three sides. One side, two side, three side. So the perimeter of this shape is going to be equal to 4.5 plus 7 plus 6.4. You did that in your head? 17.9. Very good. There's your perimeter. And then we need the area. The area is equal to 1 half times the base, times the height. So our area is going to be equal to 1 half times, here's our base. See it? Here's the base of this triangle. I know there's a lot up there, but there's the base of that triangle. So we've got 1 half times 7 times, the height isn't in there yet, is it? The height is perpendicular to the base. It goes from P straight down intersects at 90. So since it's a vertical line, what's its distance? Four. It's four. It's right here too, isn't it? And it's right here. All right, so we got one half times seven times four. So the area of this triangle is equal to 14. Now, those are coordinate geometry problems, and sometimes they do require a little bit of work, but if you can get better at this Pythagorean theorem to find these side lengths, it's much less time-consuming than using the distance formula. Does anybody have any questions on what we've talked about today? Your practice problems for today. In the workbook, we're doing page 11. You're going to do 1 through 9, and then 10. And then on page 12, you're going to do 1 through 6. seven, nine, and ten. Okay, and then check focus. For a homework assignment. All right, a little shorter week this week, but we'll, we're going to stay on our same schedule of notes and practice, notes and practice, study guide on Thursday, quiz on Friday. Anybody have any questions? All right, Zoomers, I'm going to end this meeting. Talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day.